Hello everybody, it's Singing Hin here, also known as Hannah to some people. It's February, it's Valentine's Day, it's love, all things wonderful love. We're going to talk about music as a language of love this month and talk also about the fact that music isn't just a language of love but it is a language and there are the two pillars of language and music. So. Let's dive right in. So, music as the language of love. Yeah, okay, it's a cliche, but it's true. Think about it. Music can really, really tug at those heartstrings or whatever you want to call them. And quite often, it's literally the physics of the sound waves of music that are thrilling through our body and we're feeling it. But also, it can be the lyrics, it can be the mood of the piece of music. It can also be the tempo. Think about something like, Oh, when the saints, oh, when the saints, oh, when the saints go marching in. I mean, who doesn't want to tap their feet? I had to click my hands as well just to keep going. And what else is there? Think about the eye of the tiger. How emotive is that piece of music? And then you've got the other things, the sad things. Now you say you love me. Something sad and sorrowful. So it can be all about language that way, but we're going to dive deeper still. Music as a tradition. Well, as you all know, music has been going for quite a long time, even pre-millennials. And at that point, i.e. pre-millennials, there was an oral tradition of remembering pieces of music and passing them on. That sort of folklore oral tradition. And that's all over the world. But soon, especially when it came to court composers and the like, they started wanting to write this music down. So the same as any other language, you will have a language that is spoken, but is not necessarily written down. But to be fair, most now are written down one way or another. So if you think about Mozart and his brigade, that's because I'm not very much into classical music. I don't know what they're called. But anyway, he was writing music down for other people to play, which meant he needed to start and write in a way that other people would understand, which meant beginning of rules, of grammar, of syntax, of spelling, oh, yada, yada. But also it meant in a different way, a lot of oral traditions were being recorded on paper as well for fear of them dying out. Just like with the Mozarts who were writing down music to be played, later on in the 17th and 18th centuries, there were people who became worried that the oral tradition of music and tunes, so songs and tunes, would die out. And in a Newcastle, a committee was formed to actually go out and record all of this. And the result is this wonderful book. This is a reproduction, not the original called the Northumbrian Minstrelsy. And this is a collection of songs and the tune that went with it that's been written down so that we didn't forget the tune. And that was created by the Society of Antiquaries. It was published by the Society of Antiquaries in 1882. And the, the society was formed over a hundred years before that, I believe it was, to record all of these songs. But actually, the songs were still going and most of the committee had died out before the darn thing was published. So, by writing down their opuses, their oral traditions, it was a way of holding on, but it was also a way of creating a language, the structure and the grammar. And it's that we're going to look at next. 